It is the single most important thing you will do all week to set your lineup and watch this video, right? You gotta know who to start and sit. We're gonna help you get there. Welcome to Fantasy Football, brought to you by Norton, denier of digital dangers everywhere. I'm Lauren Shahadi, alongside Jamie Eisenberg. Your start of the week, let's start with Joseph Adai. Going into the game with a hand injury, you're not too worried about it. You think he's gonna run all over him. Yeah, he's had a couple weeks to get rid of that hand injury, so he should be fine. I love this matchup against the Rams. Start all your Colts. Start Peyton Manning. Start Joseph Adai. Start Donald Brown even. And as we know, all of those receivers, except for maybe Anthony Gonzalez, are still dealing with that knee injury. But I think the Colts will put up a lot of points against St. Louis. You saw what the Rams did against Maurice Jones-Drew last week. He gave up three touchdowns to Jones-Drew. And I think you're going to see Adai continue to play at a high level. He's coming off a big game against the Titans prior to their bye week. Had a nice game receiving. He's a third running back in terms of receiving catches. So I think you'll see him continue to be a factor catching the ball out of the backfield for the Colts. Just love what Adai is doing at this point and I think you'll see him, Lauren, continue to play at a high level this week. As much as you like Adai, you dislike Deshaun Jackson this week. Now the Eagles have many options. He doesn't seem to be one of them. You know, he does not have a touchdown yet playing with Donovan McNabb and if you look at what happened to him last week, six catches, 94 yards. First time he and McNabb really have gotten on the same page. But the Eagles have some issues, as you can see when we get to quarterbacks. I think you'll see the Eagles offensive line, if they're missing Jason Peters, that's going to be a little bit of a troublesome factor against the Redskins, who are actually doing a good job getting to the quarterback. But the thing about Deshaun Jackson this week is he had a terrible history against the Redskins last year, only three catches in two games. The Redskins are still playing well on defense as much as they're having trouble on offense. So I think you'll see that London Fletcher at linebacker, some of the secondary guys there, when you talk about Carlos Rogers, D'Angelo Hall, Laron Landry, still playing at a high level. They haven't given up yet, even though Jim Zorn may be fired at some point. So I think you'll see Deshaun Jackson struggle, and if Jason Peters isn't in there, that's going to be a bad thing for that offense in Philadelphia. So, Lauren, we could be looking at a low-scoring game here in that Monday night contest, <laughs> and I don't think you'll see a lot of points coming from Washington, and I think you'll see some of the main guys outside of maybe Brian Westbrook struggle for the Eagles. We haven't seen a lot of points coming from Washington so far this season, so we'll see if that changes. You know, you made a point last week to say, sit Eli Manning, and you guys were right. The numbers told all, but this week you're kind of saying the opposite. Yeah, hey, we got one right. What do hey, you know? Hey, what do you know? I, I think when you look <laughs> at, at Eli Manning this week, you know, I'm not buying into the Arizona secondary after what happened against Mass Hasselbeck last week. That was just more of a product of Hasselbeck and the Seahawks not being able to get the job done. Eli Manning coming off that bad game, going home, getting the opportunity to correct some of the problems that they had against the Saints. I think they'll do that. Arizona secondary is not very good. You'll see Manning connect with Steve Smith, Mario Manningham, Hakeem Nix. I think even Kevin Boss gets involved. Remember, the Giants aren't running the ball very well, so this is going to be a game where Eli Manning steps up. Love Matt Ryan and what should be a shootout against the Cowboys, so Tony Romo also. And then you'll see Jay Cutler. I think with the problems that the Bengals are having on defense, losing their star pass rusher in Antoine Odom, that's a bad thing. I think Cutler plays well. Okay, perhaps good news for them. Perhaps bad news for Brett Favre. Now, Troy Polamalu is back. Perhaps his numbers won't be back. Brett Favre's numbers won't be back. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Favre has been fantastic. You know, you talk about a fancy quarterback. Brett Favre Exceeding has been expectations among the best guys this year. 12 touchdowns, only two interceptions. But you hit the nail on the head. Troy Polamalu was back. And so disregard what you've seen from the Steelers secondary for the majority of the season so far. Week one, he gets hurt. He didn't come back until last week against Cleveland. That really wasn't a good barometer of what we're going to see from the Steelers' defense in terms of their secondary. This is going to be really a good test for them with Palomalu back there. So I think you'll see Brett Favre. Remember, he's only been outdoors once so far this year. That was week one at Cleveland. Their two other road games were at Detroit, at St. Louis, both in a dome. So you're seeing Favre go outdoors where his receivers are typically better indoors. And this is going to be a very, very defensive-oriented game. I know we thought that last week when you talked about Minnesota and Baltimore. But I think Favre's going to struggle in this matchup. I don't like Carson Palmer against Chicago because he's just not playing at a high level. And as we talked about with McNabb, not going to be a lot of passing success for him. Did not throw a touchdown pass against the Redskins last year in two games. Well, Jamie, if you're a Larry Johnson owner, you're wondering, when are you going to get into the end zone? So I'm asking you that question. Yeah, now. I think that's a, what a lot of people are looking for. And hopefully it happens this week. You know, Larry Johnson is coming off his best game against the Redskins last week. 23 carries for 83 yards. So we'll see if that can translate into finally finding the end zone and scoring a touchdown. But he's got a great matchup this week. San Diego coming off a short week uh, where they lost a tough game on Monday night against Denver. Their defensive line still dealing with some issues. And I think this is the chance for Larry Johnson to get the job done. Remember, we're talking about a lot of running backs on bye this week. Ray Rice, Chris Johnson, uh, Maurice Jones-Drew, Kevin Smith. So a lot of the star running backs not there. So I think you can see guys on this list. Larry Johnson, not typically a fantasy starter. Jonathan Stewart, Leon Washington. We don't have guys like Lawrence Maroney and Justin Fargus listed this week, but you'll see them in the print version of Stardom and Stidham. Not typically fantasy starters, but this is the great week to use those type of players. You know, Jamie, we're asking Larry Johnson, when are you going to get into the end zone? We're asking Steve Slayton, are you going to hold on to the ball? Yeah, not only is he fumbling the ball, he's not getting the job done running the ball. 
It's catching the ball where Steve Slayton's getting the job done. And that's not typically what's something you would pencil in for a guy like Steve Slayton to give you the type of fantasy production that you're looking for, not to mention the fact that he has a tough matchup this week against San Francisco. The 49ers, prior to the game against Atlanta, right before their bye week, was doing a great job against opposing running backs. They held Steven Jackson and Adrian Peterson to very minimal totals, and I think you'll see them key in on stopping Steve Slayton. They know they have to get that offense off the field, and to do that, they have to stop the run. I think you'll see Steve Slayton struggle this week. He could make some plays in, in the receiving games. Hard to bench him, but you look at the rushing totals so far this year, not getting it done. Pierre Thomas, tough matchup, along with Reggie Bush and Mike Bell. They're all sharing carries there against the Dolphins. The Saints are just, just a, a mixed bag of running backs at this point. Let's talk about wide receivers and who's starting. Miles Austin, we saw him filling in for Roy, Roy Williams, rather. But is he? are you comfortable enough with him, Jamie, to put him starting? I'm comfortable this week for a couple of reasons. He is starting now because they're going to put Patrick Creighton probably into the slot role, take him out of the starting wide receiver position. That's going to open things up for him. And then I think you'll see with the matchup that he has in store, the Falcons dealing with injuries at the cornerback spot. Brian Williams is now out for the season, so they're going to shuffle some things in that Atlanta secondary that should allow Roy Williams to maybe make some plays. But Miles Austin, we saw Tony Romo go to him quite a bit. Ten catches, 250 yards, and two touchdowns in his last game against the Chiefs. Obviously a much better matchup in that game, but I think you'll see Tony Romo again come out and play well. This game has the potential to be high scoring, so I think you'll see Miles Austin be one of those receivers you can count on in this matchup. You know, it's never a good thing when you think you're not a good asset to the team, and that's the case with Steve Smith. He said it. Do you think he is this week? I don't think so. I think you'll see him play a lot better than he did last week when he only had one catch for four yards. That's not going to happen again. But this is a tough matchup for him. I know everybody sees Buffalo and sees the chance to maybe make some plays here, but Buffalo is actually the best team against opposing wide receivers. They've only given up one touchdown to an opposing wide receiver, and I think you'll see Steve Smith continue to struggle. He hasn't yet to score a touchdown this year. Jake Delhomme is just not getting the job done. And so I think you'll see the, the way that the Panthers are going to win this game is the way that they did last week, giving the ball to Jonathan Stewart, giving the ball to D'Angelo Williams, who's the best player on that offense right now. And they're just not getting Steve Smith the ball enough for him to make some plays. T.O., as we know, continues to struggle. Carolina actually is number two in terms of uh, opposing wide receiver production. And then Santana Moss, I just think that that Philadelphia defense will do a good job in stopping him. Did not score a touchdown against them in two games last year. Now, a lot of information. Are you taking notes for any game time decision turn to fantasy football today every Sunday, 11 o'clock for two hours? For Jamie Eisenberg, I'm Lauren Shahadi. Until next time.